Okay, and we will start in approximately one more minute. We are going to be over 100 attendees right now, but we still have a few seconds before it is two o'clock. Yes. And my name is Steve Roses. It is now time, it is two o'clock, that's two o'clock Eastern. Of course, various of you may be in different time zones. And so it may be three o'clock if you're in certain parts of Canada, it may be three hours uh, earlier. If for example, you're in, um, if you're in California, if you're in um, Halifax, no, if you're in Newfoundland, it might be an hour and a half different. So it really varies. I'm sure we have people from all over and we may even have people from some foreign countries. Anyway, very exciting to be here to do this demonstration. My name is Steve Roses. The company is Hein Online. Today, we're going to be talking about intellectual property in sports and entertainment, the impacts of brands, trademark and copyright, especially in the context of two add-on collections. One is the intellectual property law collection. Some of you have it, some of you don't. And also what we call Blaze, which is the business and legal aspects of sports and entertainment collection. Before I forget, if you are a High Online subscriber already and you want to add um, either the intellectual property law collection we're going to speak about or the Blaze business and legal aspects of sports and entertainment collection, either one of them we're having a special discount as per this webinar, 15% off. But we can give you the details of that later, but we do like to have promotions with our webinars. All of that said, let's continue. Now, you probably know from if you've attended other webinars, um, on the left, Steve Roses, we have Tim Hoagie, who will also be doing the demonstration, the webinar later today. We had Roxanne Marmion earlier this morning doing a demonstration webinar. And so all three of us make up the team of Hein Online experts that do demonstrations of Hein Online in these monthly webinars. Um, so what we're going to talk about a little bit, a brief bit about Hein Online. So we have what's called a Hein Online core collection. Some of you are, for example, law school. So you might get the academic core plus. Some of you are academic institutions that are not law schools, and some of you may get what we call high online academic. Some of you might be uh, law firms, or some of you might be um, government accounts and law libraries of different sorts, and you get our core collections, our high online core. Well, you can have any of those core packages, but you can also add add-ons. If you don't have any of those things, if you don't uh, have any high online, you can also get a trial of our core collection. If you're an academic institution, you could get a, a trial of our Heine Online academic collection. If you've never had a trial of Heine Online before, you're really going to enjoy it. It's multidisciplinary, and your students and faculty and librarians alike will love uh, it. So do not hesitate to ask us for a free trial uh, if you have never had one. If you are interested in the subject of IP or in business and legal aspects of sports and entertainment, you can get a trial of those add-on collections, uh, the specific ones. Um, so just be aware of that. As I mentioned, 15% discount if you order by August 31st, 2023. Uh, intellectual property law materials in one database. What does it have? More than 100 legislative histories dating back to 1909. Uh, more than 1,300 books. You know that Hein Online has books, government documents, and case law and articles. Well, there are more than 1,300 books in the intellectual property law collection, including early Commonwealth and comparative copyright law books, comprehensive coverage of the manual of patent examining procedure, and full access to the CFR Title 37 and the U.S. Code Titles 15, 17, and 35. Those are the US code titles that deal with IP. So as you get the feeling, uh, and quite rightly, the IP collection is predominantly US focused in its content. Then business and legal aspects of sports and entertainment is has US content as well as international content. So the domestic US sports, of course, also things like uh, football or soccer, if you will, outside of the United States. 
um, you receive a 15% discount on that. If you order by August 31st, it won the Andrews Legal Literature Award, 1.5 million pages divided between sports and entertainment, 55 new topics with articles and cases covering um, business and uh, sports and entertainment, uh, government documents, of course, the Marquette sports information. And some of you, I know that some of you know Fro Frank Hodak and Ed Edmonds. They're both former uh, law library directors of major law schools, and they are the editors of this Blaze collection. So really great editorial work done. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, why Hine Online? Number one, image-based. You, you know that Hine Online, we have the actual images, full PDFs of, of uh, journal articles, books, et cetera. Um, but at the same time, everything is fully searchable. We back everything up with the text. We have multidisciplinary content. It's not just government, politics, and law. It also has everything in between, religion, political science, criminal justice, and more, even gender studies, even some science-related materials. It is truly multidisciplinary. And that is what so many institutions, so many companies have learned throughout the country and the world. Intuitive tools, you can't get more intuitive than Hine Online uh, because it takes you, it literally takes you to some of the results that you need to do your research further. It is intuitive and we'll show you some of that, those intuitive tools. And it's incredibly affordable. It's more affordable than some of the collections, some of the databases you're thinking in your mind that are affordable, Hine Online is even more affordable. So take that, what you think is affordable, and accelerate it, Hine Online is even more affordable than that. So it's hard to quantify it right here because we're obviously talking to different people, but we can give you a quote for anything you need. It is incredibly affordable. Um, time to tackle intellectual property and sports and entertainment head on. We're going to look at that. We're going to take you right to Hannah Line. But first, I really want you to all look at these emails because we are here for your customer service enjoyment. So write down these emails, take a photo of it. You can contact us. We're a small company. We like to answer people's questions. These are the three of us. Take down these emails if you could. Okay. You got that? Everyone have that? Yes. Everyone has these emails down. Good. Okay. We want you to know you can get a six month trial uh, of Hein Online Academic if you're an academic institution. Has more than 30 academic databases. You can live chat us. We give you phone support. We even give you free training resources and much more. Be aware of also this marketing email. Be aware of this phone number for customer service. Okay, now I'm going to do what is always for me the most comprehensive, the complicated part of my uh, switch, which is where I switch, uh, where I switch to Hine Online. Everyone gets to get a look at my desktop. You should be able to see Hine Online here. If you can't see it, please let me know right away. But I did intend to have you look at Hine Online. And this is Hine Online. This happens to be Hine Online Academic, and we've added business and legal aspects of sports and entertainment. And we also have added intellectual property law collection. You see right here. Now, um, so as you know, Hine Online Academic, like all the core collections, has many different databases dealing with journals, dealing with government documents, dealing with case law, et cetera, multi-subject, interdisciplinary content, and easy to use and quite affordable. Okay, now I'm going to just, I want you to actually see the intellectual property law collection by itself. We're going to do some searching on these topics uh, by themselves, but I want you to actually see the database. So here is intellectual property law collection. Okay, now you'll notice it has books, in this case, in, um, almost 1,400 books, monographs and treatises, legislative histories, 111 legislative histories, that pertains specifically to the area of IP. When we say IP, we're talking about patents, copyright, trademark, trade secrets, et cetera. Legislative histories, federal legislative histories dealing with those topics. Congressional hearings, obviously the whole nature of IP has come before Congress in different capacities. Um, whether we're talking about WIPO or whether we're talking about more domestic concerns, we have congressional hearings, full text congressional hearings on IP. Be aware of that, Hein and Line is a source of that material. And you can go back historically or current. Now, CRS reports, there are CR Congressional Research Service reports on so many topics throughout Hine Online. 
IP law collection is no different. We have 327 CRS reports on all different aspects of intellectual property. We have the Code of Federal Regula Regulations, Title 37. These are the various US code titles I mentioned that deal with IP right here. Scholarly articles, that is the scholarly articles are the engine behind Hein Online. We have lots of great stuff, but you have to know that scholarly articles really are the, um, I don't want to say piece de resistance. I want to say the most, well, really, they're the engine behind Hein Online. Uh, of course, we have trademark materials here, the TMEP, USPTO materials, the Patent and Trademark Office, periodicals of all sorts, federal agency decisions, administrative tribunals that have an aspect of intellectual property, the MPEP, and then like we have to so many collections, the LibGuide. I just showed you this one. I'm just going to also show you Blaze, which is Business and Legal Aspects of Sports and Entertainment. By the way, Blaze is one of those titles, Business and Legal Aspects of Sports and Entertainment, that for subscribers to the core, it's a one-time fee perpetual access purchase. So it ends up being extra affordable. So what does Blaze look like? You're going to open up Blaze, and we're going to just see some of the different aspects of it. You can look at browse all titles. You can look at the different books, the congressional documents in here, the periodicals, the bibliographies, scholarly sports articles, also scholarly entertainment articles, important entertainment cases, important sports cases, important sports cases, important entertainment cases. Where do I go when I want to find important entertainment cases? Do I go to important sports cases? No, I don't think so. You go to important entertainment cases. Then you have scholarly entertainment articles, scholarly sports articles, uh, external sports links, external entertainment links. And then you know about the uni uniform laws that many states buy into and have their own version of. There are uniform laws that apply to the sports and entertainment industry. We have them for you here. And then we have reference service sources and bibliography. So um, what it ends up being with the editorial work of Frank Hodeck and Ed Edmonds, it ends up being a one-stop shop for being able to research this information. If your institution has any classes on it or your entity, your organization ever researches this area, this is going to be an affordable way to have really key information on this. Now I'm going to take you to all the databases because I want to... Um, I'm going to all the databases that is that we have this subscription to appear as opposed to being in the individual Blaze collection and in the individual intellectual property law collection. I'm going to put in, uh, I'm going to do a IP related search. I'm going to put in Napster and copyright infringement. And I'm going to put file sharing here too. And this is a one box search. This is not one of our advanced search features. I'll show you that as well. And now we're searching in here. And then we're gonna use facets to narrow down our searching because you see we have over 2000 results here. Um, and we could go right to these results if we want to. We notice it's in relevance order. We could also put these in oldest first, newest first, or number of times cited or number of times accessed uh, in the past 12 months or even most cited author. But relevance is often the best way to go. You also can limit your search using the facets. You can limit it by date. Maybe you only want to look at 2016 to date. Maybe you want to specifically look at articles or books. If you want to do that, articles, maybe you want to look at the Law Journal Library specifically, and then you can narrow things that way. Maybe you want to limit this to a certain section, like I might want to limit this to articles, the 1,300 articles. Now I'm limiting it to articles, and I'm going to also see... Maybe I want to limit it to things that will apply to a certain location. For example, something that deals specifically with the state of California or something that specifically deals with the state of New York. I'm just going to put California just to quickly limit it. And now we have it down to these 42 results, uh, all articles that all mention California, et cetera. So now I'm looking at these, other, these articles and here's an article on a conversation and colloquia concerning who owns your digital creations. Uh, that could be interesting. Notice it mentions Napster and MP3 and various other things. Um, here's actually a note on infringement.com, uh, RIAA versus Napster and the war against online music piracy. 
That could be interesting. Here's something also dealing with peer-to-peer -peer and the Sony doctrine. Um, now notice, you're probably wondering what is this over here as you're looking through the different articles. This tells, this is scholar check. It tells you that this article has been cited by nine articles and this article has been accessed in Heinlein line in a rolling 12 month period five times. That's how you know, you can get an instant sense. Is this a really important article? Well, you can see that this article here has been cited 34 times and we can go to the full text of that article that cites this article if we want, you just click here. Um, but I want to find something, I'm gonna look at this. This is from Duke uh, Law and Technology Review. From Napster to Kaza, the battle over peer-to-peer -peer file sharing goes international. I'm opening this up, I'm just gonna use this as an opportunity to show you some um, searching features and then we'll go on to some of the advanced searching features. So. Um, if you want to download a PDF of this section, you can do that right here. If you want to print, you see this, it says print. If you want to email this to someone, you can actually send this file, not just to people who are on trial with you, but also to peers or colleagues that don't even have Hein Online. You could send them a temporary link uh, to this document. You could email them a PDF link. Now, if you have someone who uses a um, screen reader, uh, or has uh, accessibility issues such that they need a screen reader, you could change this document in a second to, you could just say, change it right to text. Look, it's just like regular text. And now you can toggle that back so it becomes the image again. Now, everything in Hide Online is integrated, so you'll notice um, if there are any um, blue hypertext links on a given page, that means that you can click on it and go to an article that's cited in an article, a case that's cited in an article, a government documents that's cited in an article. Anytime you see blue hypertext links and they're throughout all the various documents. Now, if you want to advance the screen, say to another page within a document, boom, you just do that. Now you're on another page within this document. Notice here's an example of a hypertext link. If I click on this, it's gonna take me to that January 10th, 2003, document in the news. Um, and that goes for cases, government documents, etc. Now, if you want this to be full screen, you can do that. You can click on this and it makes it full screen. Now, if you wanted to create a permalink to this uh, such that you're going to use it for a syllabus or you wanted to instantly always have a link that goes to this page in this document, that's where permalink comes in. If you have a trial or a subscription high online, you're going to want to tell us your proxy information and fill out what we call a branding form. That's gonna make your permalinks work remotely as well as when you're on campus, um, as well as when you're in the office. So um, be sure to send us a branding form, it's free, um, and we can make your permalinks work remotely as well. Now, there's something, a great advanced feature here called More Like This, and More Like This goes through and it finds interesting words um, and gives you all new results without requiring you to do a whole new query search. So let's just take a look at that. It uses, by the way, machine learning, a little bit of AI, and in terms of picking up what the computer thinks are the most interesting words from these documents. It gives you me a whole bunch of new results, and I might love these new results, and I can keep them, but notice it's boosted the terms a certain way. Like, it really boosted the term Kazakh. And it gave pretty high note to Napster inf infringing, but I might want to change this a little and lower Kaza because maybe I'm less concerned with it. But Napster might be very important to my search. Infringing might be very important. File sharing, hugely important. And I might want to say, make sure these go from 2000 to 2023. And I could even add a new term here. Oh, um, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Uh, Spotify. I could throw in Spotify if I wanted to in here. But for now, I'm going to leave this here. Doing a new search for important articles. Notice we found something amazing. This article, Media Neutrality in the Digital Area Era, era a Study of Peer to Peer File Sharing Issues from Chicago Kent. Um, and from Napster to Kazaa, we've seen that article before. So some of these are the same and some of them are additional. Uh, Post Napster peer-to-peer -peer filing systems. Notice all of them have this 
this um, feature, this uh, this uh, scholar check feature, sorry, losing the words. Okay, so now I am going to go to, you probably want to go into here and you want to see, well, how do I cite this document? So now I'm looking at this document, it's media neutrality in the digital era, dealing certainly with intellectual property, and I'm going to just cite things by clicking cite over here. It's clicking cite, and notice it puts it in a variety of different formats. We could use Chicago School, we could use MLA, we could use APA. If we're in Canada, we can use McGill Guide. If we're in Australia, we can use AGLC. I'm just going to shrink this down a little bit so you can see all the features here. I'm going to shrink it back up afterwards. Um, so I am now on the site page. And you notice here, do you see here? I know it's small, but hopefully you can see it on your screen. This is where you export to RefWorks. This is where you would export to Zotero, uh, Noodle Tools, RefWorks. EndNote, so we have all, we work with all of that software. So no matter what you're using, there's probably something we work with. By the way, we work with um, all the major discovery layers. So just be aware of that. Um, they are aware of our files. They have feeds to our um, different KBART files. So they know what are, what's in uh, collections. So just be aware of that as well in case you had any question about that. Okay, I wanna show you some advanced search features here. I'm going to do a search. Uh, I'm going to show you a Venn diagram search because people love the Venn diagram search feature. It's especially great for visual learners. I am going to put in, um, let's see, image rights. Now this relates to the whole concept of uh, image and athletes and who owns uh, their the right to use their image, um, even among um, let's say amateur athletes, but I'm going to put in image rights. And I'm going to put in um, Major League Baseball. And I'm going to put in Athlete. And I'm going to put in likeness. Okay, so we have four terms here. Hopefully, it won't take that long to find them using the Venn diagram search, but it'll give you a really good sense of this feature and how you can use Hot Online not only to research sports, I mean, IP, but also sports related IP and business and legal aspects of sports and entertainment. So you can see here the term likeness has a huge number of responses. Um, so if we go here, there are 20,000 results for the term likeness. If we go here to athlete, there are 18,000 results. But let's say we want to see the overlap between the term like likeness and athlete. And you can see that limits it a bit. And so there are 2,000 results. Now, let's say we want to see likeness, athlete, and image rights. Okay, now we have that aspect. And we could play games with the overlap of this and pick things. Notice just from this, we have it down to 145 results. Now, here's an article from there. Leveling the playing field, a separate tax regime for international athletes. Notice the money that comes from intellectual property in the context of sports and entertainment has a tax aspect, both nationally and internationally. And so you can see this result is dealing with the tax aspect of that. Or here's something on the right of publicity of athletes in the United States and Europe. Um, and notice we have gone through all our, the documents on Hine Online and attributed um, a whole taxonomy um, to the various subjects and categories of the topics in the documents on Hine Online. So you can see right of publicity of athletes in the United States and Europe tells you that this deals with publicity, right of publicity, intellectual property law, civil law, and human rights law. And now we're going here. And we this is the result. Once again, if you wanted to email this to someone, let's say your name is Steve Roses and you wanted to have something emailed to you, you could put in sroses at hein.com. And now you're emailing your to yourself or to anyone else who happens to be named sroses at wshine.com. 
Okay. Now, sorry about things popping up on my screen. I should have shut that off before, but you're following this. You're you're in, you're in the mood to to keep following this. Now, I want to show you another advanced search feature. So we'll go to here and I'm going to make my screen bigger because I know I had shrunk it to 80%. So it's back here to this size and we are going to do a search. Let's do go into here, Law Journal Library, and we're gonna go into Advanced Search. Oh, we're gonna go into Pathfinder Subjects to give you another look at uh, using Pathfinder to find the kind of things you're looking for in High Line. Because you, we want you to take advantage of the combination of human curation and machine learning that we did to ascribe subjects to all the documents on High Line. So, for example, this here is how we've classified everything applied sciences, humanities, industries, natural and formal sciences, social sciences. So in the humanities, you notice there's this whole area on law. And within law, you could look at a subject like intellectual property law. And within that, you could look at all this. Well, do I want to narrow in on copyright and music? Do I want to narrow in on industrial intellectual property? Perhaps right of publicity, perhaps royalties, perhaps trade secrets, perhaps dilution laws. So that is a whole aspect of you can, of how you can go. You can also go into a subject like applied sciences and look within business. Notice something like business and the law. These things all can relate to sports and intellectual property, but notice it's here with even within science. So there's a science aspect of applied sciences aspect of this topic. And everything is organized to work together and to be integrated. So Pathfinder, oh, I do want to show you this other aspect of Pathfinder, which is the graphic chart, the graphical chart. So that was in the classification system mode. And now we're going to look at the graphical chart. And you can see here that we're going to change it from text to graphical. And this is very useful, especially for folks who've never used Time Online. Yes, you can see this whole section on humanities. Maybe you want to go right into law. But there, notice there's another. Uh, part of humanities, arts and entertainment directly. And you could go in here by clicking arts and entertainment. And then within arts and entertainment, you could pick and choose. Do I want to look at film and television? Do I want to look at music? Do I want to look at pornography, gaming, photographs, video games, parody, comedy, theater, et cetera, and arts and entertainment generally. So, and then within this, like say, if you went to gaming, you can click here, and it's going to go right to gaming related results. Uh, and then you could look right here because you're already going into results related to gaming. And notice here some specifically about um, indigenous peoples in gaming, et cetera. So there's a lot of different ways you can approach things. Um, another great advanced search that you can do is right here, just going into a specific collection and you can like set up a template. So do I want to research the text? Do I want to research the article title, the author creator, the description, the date, the country, the, the uh, state, the DOI? Yes, we have DOI there. You could put in a built-in proximity search. Yes, you could do a proximity search in the one box using Boolean, but you don't have to know Boolean to use that line. In fact, in this template, you could just say within 25 words, within 10, within five, it's all here for you. Also, we have a whole keyword search builder. It works just like more like this, where you could put in something like image like this. Maybe NCLAA, but maybe you don't want to boost that quite as much. And you could put in, um, you could even put intellectual property right here. And you could boost that. And so you have all these terms boosted a certain way. And maybe you want to look at uh, 1990 to, say, 2023. And now you're doing a search with all of that set up for you. And it's going to take you right to certain results. Right on point regarding the MCAA, regarding intellectual property rights, regarding image and likeness. It's all there for you. Um, and then once you have that, 
you could go back into business and legal aspects of sports and entertainment, assuming you're on trial for it or you buy it, and you can get into finer and finer detail in your research. Just a few quick uh, customer service related things because we have a couple minutes. What's new? You wanna find out what's new. For example, what we've added lately on IP or business and legal aspects of sports and entertainment, you can go right to what's new, new content that we've added, monthly content releases. If you need help, you can contact us. We have a chat line from 8.30 to 6, Monday through Friday. Um, you can give us feedback. We're a very small company. We love feedback. We have lib guides that you're welcome to use on your website on almost every key collection on Heine Line, including Blaze, including Intellectual Property Law Collection, including most parts, uh, most of the larger collections in the core collection. So use these lib guides. They're amazing. They have tips and tricks. They have videos. Go to our knowledge base. You want to find out what our accessibility guidelines are or how much you can download at one time. Go to the knowledge base. There are also some videos in there. You speaking of videos, Hein Online has tons of videos available to make your research easier. We want your research to be easy, fast, great, and inexpensive. So how do you do that? Go to YouTube and Hein Online, and you'll see all sorts of additional videos on how to get the most out of Hein Online. We want you to be a member of our Hein Online blog. We show you all the time how to research certain IP or sports and entertainment issues, as well as many other subjects, criminal justice, what have you. Do subscribe to the Hein Online blog. You can get to it right there on by going into help right into the Hein Online blog. Or if you want to go right into a user guide, we have a whole user guide. You're welcome to print out the user guide. And it'll show you also, in addition to the many videos, and other tools we've given you and LibGuides, it'll show you how to use Heine Online. We have a privacy policy for you. And for those who are really into Boolean, definitely, definitely, definitely look at this advanced search syntax guide because it's gonna have some thoughts and recommendations uh, for you in using Heine Online and using the syntax to fine tune your search. Of course, as I've told you before, you don't need to use any search syntax in Heine Online. You can find good results by almost doing a Google type search, but some of us are trained to use Boolean and some of us really like using Boolean. And for those of us that like that, go right to the advanced search syntax user guide and you can really fine tune your searching that way. All of that said, I hope everyone's doing well. Let me see if there are any questions that I can answer. Are there lib guides on animal law? Yes, in fact, if you go to on heinonline.org and go to pick the libguides, just pick the one on animal law. There's a whole collection on animal law. And so we've done a libguide on our animal uh, rights collection. And uh, so you're welcome to use that. If you don't have a current subscription to the animal rights and law collection, um, you can get a trial of it. So definitely check that out. The chat feature, if you like the chat feature now, we're working on it. We're really gonna bring it to the next level. So definitely be on the lookout for changes coming to our chat feature. Uh, when you do a Boolean search on Hunter Line, do words like uh, need to be capitalized, such as and. Yes, when you use the and um, in a Venn diagram search in a regular one box search, the way, the Boolean way to do it on Hunter Line is to make it capital A and D or to make or capital O R. You don't need to search that way, but when you're using an and or an or that way on Hunter Line you would capitalize those. Like I said, you could put two terms right next to each other and you would still get a, a, a very well-informed result. But if you're interested in using that and feature or the Venn diagram feature, then that's when you would use Boolean uh, in that way. And that Boolean uh, syntax guide can lead you to that. I think I've answered all the open questions. I don't think I have any more questions. Um, I see we have quite a few, a number of attendees. We will make this recording available. I realize I've gone over. Maybe you have one more question. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank all of you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Stretch after this demonstration to keep your circulation going. And everyone enjoy and uh, really enjoy Hein Online if you already have access to it. Ask us for a trial if you haven't had a, uh, a trial yet. Um, and everyone else, have a wonderful day. I don't see any more trial, any more questions.
Thank you so much. Now we will be signing off. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks again. If you think of any questions after the fact, please email me at, or Tim Hoagie. Tim Hoagie is T-H-O-O-G-E at WSHine.com or Steve Roses, S-Roses at WSHine.com. But you all wrote down those emails when I showed it to you on that screen. So you all have those. Thank you so much. Talk to you later, everyone. Bye-bye.